I'm very excited uh, to be working in technology, particularly at this time. Sergey Brin is a world-famous entrepreneur, IT expert, and Russian-born American tycoon. His project with Larry Page has been a real breakthrough in the field of internet services, digital and cloud technology, and now almost everyone on the planet knows the name Google. Today, you will learn about the life of the creator of this popular search engine. Ready? Well then, okay, Google. Sergey Brin, how the co-founder of Google lives and where he spends his billions. Sergey Brin was born in Moscow on August 21st, 1973 into an educated family of hereditary scientists. Both parents graduated from the Department of Mechanics and Mathematics at Moscow State University. His paternal grandmother, Maya, studied philology, and his grandfather, Israel, was an assistant professor in one of the departments of the Moscow Power Engineering Institute. His father, Michael Brin, was a researcher at the Gosplan Institute of Economics in the Soviet Union, and after he moved to the United States, he became a professor at the University of Maryland and successfully taught there until his retirement. His mother, Eugenia, is a prominent meteorologist and climatologist at NASA and is also active as the head of a charitable organization that helps Jewish immigrants. In fact, it was the Jewish roots that made it necessary for the Brin family to leave for the U.S. The Soviet Union had an unofficial anti-Semitism that manifested itself in a ban on accepting Jewish students in certain fields and restrict on other fields of study. Michael was denied the publication of his scientific works and postgraduate studies and was prohibited from speaking at conferences. As a result, in 1979, an extremely difficult decision was made to move the entire family to America. The only one who decided to stay in the USSR was his grandfather, Israel. He was very much appreciated at the Institute, and in his words, he never experienced any personal harassment. After moving, the family settled in Maryland, where they rented a house and Sergei was sent to a decent private school. The parents quickly found jobs in prestigious scientific organizations, and the grandmother obtained a driver's license to drive her grandson to classes. This is not to say that everything was easy for the boy, and it took him a few months to adapt and immerse himself in the new language environment. It was worth it, however, because he soon became one of the best students in his class. Incidentally, Sergei has never forgotten Russian, and he prefers to communicate in it with his parents. Already at the age of 17, he returned with his father to his hometown of Moscow, which made the most negative impression on the young mathematician. By his own admission, the 90s in Russia, their home country, looked so repulsive that he warmly thanked his father for his decision to emigrate to the United States. At the age of nine, Sergei received a luxurious gift from his father, a personal computer. It was a true miracle, because even in technologically advanced America, few people could afford such a thing. The speed with which the child learned the basics of programming impressed not only his parents, but also teachers, and therefore he had to be transferred to the high school in Greenbelt. There, he mastered the college curriculum in record time, and afterwards enrolled at the University of Maryland in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science. Not only was he an able student, but a man of distinct signs of genius, so he earned his degree early and with it, a grant to continue his studies. The choice fell on the prestigious Stanford University where he enrolled in 1993. There he met the man with whom he was to make a real technological revolution. According to the legend, the young scientist Larry Page, who was one year younger than Bryn, showed the newcomer around the campus and a friendship developed between the young people during this first tour. According to another more interesting version, the friendship grew out of mutual antipathy and rivalry in academic matters. Be that as it may, the fateful friendship emerged and led this talented couple to write a scientific paper, The Anatomy of a Large-Scale Hypertextual Web Search Engine. The idea of creating a search engine that would greatly simplify the lives of internet users had been haunting Brin for a long time. It is noteworthy that the genius's grandfather visited him in the U.S. only once, in 1993, and presented his grandson with a t-shirt with Google printed on it, representing the number one, followed by a hundred zeros. The friends dropped all current projects and concentrated their energies on creating their first search engine. The result was the Backrub system, which not only searched for documents by query, but also sorted them by user relevance. They approached the Stanford administration with a ready-made solution, but despite the fact that the search engine's efficiency had been successfully proven, the university refused to fund the project. 
The wording of the rejection contains not only complaints about the system's enormous desire for internet traffic, but also concerns that the search results contain documents intended strictly for proprietary use. This failure only served to encourage them and they made a call to their inner circle. A businessman and head of a Sun Microsystems, Andy Bechtelsheim, responded and invested a rather modest but badly needed sum of $100,000 into the project. The remaining 90% of the amount necessary as founding capital was collected from acquaintances and relatives. The office was the garage of a friend of Bryn's in Menlo Park, California, and this same garage and its owner would later play an important role in Sergey Bryn's life. On September 4, 1998, Google was officially registered, but its birthday is celebrated since since September 27 of the same year. The emergence of the company name is a fascinating story. As a man with deep feelings for mathematics, Bryn was looking for an original name out of mathematical terms. The first name that came to his mind was Google. When Andy Bechtelsheim unexpectedly agreed to contribute money to Bryn and Page's endeavor, he simply pulled out a checkbook and wrote in just what he heard, namely Google, without any science related, O in the second syllable. Since the check was written to a company that didn't exist, they had to register it under that name. There is a simpler version, according to which the name Google was already occupied and could not be used as the name for the new company. The friends decided to devote themselves fully to the joint business and, after taking a leave of absence from the university, they started to work. The result was quick and just two years later, the leading media outlets began talking about the company and the fact that Google managed to hold out during the dot-com crash in the 2000s added even more credibility in the eyes of the public. Remember that due to the unjustified soaring prices in the IT market, investors lost about $5 trillion. Luckily, the company created by Bryn and Page did not suffer this fate, and they began to publicize themselves strongly. In the early 2000s, they received the prestigious Webby Award. In 2004, their names were published in Forbes magazine's list of billionaires. In the same year, Google placed their shares on the stock exchange for the first time, valuing their assets at $23 billion. From that moment, the owners and CEO announced that their salary would be only $1 per year, there would be no bonuses at all, and their income would be fully tied to the financial success of the company. This was a stroke of genius, since it clearly showed investors that the owners were personally interested in the growth of the company's profitability and capitalization. Practice has shown that none of them were wrong. As of today, the market cap of Alphabet, as Google was called in 2015, is approaching $2 trillion. Unconventional business practices, bold solutions, and an innovative approach to familiar things are largely responsible for the incredible success of the company. For example, Google executives found a very interesting way to recruit talent. The corporation does not just poach them one by one, but buys them along with the whole company. A separate term, aquahiring, was even invented for this strategy, and it is thanks to this strategy that many technology companies sprang up in Google's assets. The acquisition of the time included Android, which was bought by the two friends for just $130 million, YouTube for $1.6 billion, and the company that pioneered online advertising, DoubleClick, which was acquired for $3.1 billion. Now it's time to go back to the Menlo Park garage that Bryn had been amicably provided by his acquaintance, Susan Wojcicki, whose friend Bryn had been dating for some time. At some point, Susan demanded that her friends pay her $1,700 a month to rent it. Who knows, maybe it was this demand that prompted the friends to monetize their research. By the way, Miss Wojcicki had been CEO of YouTube until recently. However, in 2007, she and Bryn became linked not only in terms of work, but also through family relations, as the businessman married Susan's younger sister, Anne. The wedding took place in the heavenly tropical Bahamas. Sergey's wife is a graduate of Yale University, a prominent businesswoman and co-founder of the biotech company 23andMe. Through her company's research, millions of people can learn about their health status and possible diseases based on the results of genetic tests. The girl did not just fall in love with Sergey, but saw him as an ally and inspiration and a partner in scientific research. Despite the high workload and the frantic pace of life, the couple had a son, Benji, and a daughter, Chloe Wojan, three years apart. By the way, and business is built largely on our personal experiences. The thing is that Sergey Brin's mother suffers from Parkinson's disease. For a long time, this disease had been considered hereditary, but after a 2004 research, scientists came to the conclusion that a mutation of certain genes, which in some way is connected to one's ethnicity, was to blame. It turned out that such a threat is quite high in Ashkenazi Jews, whose lineage Bryn belongs to. The first thing Anne did was to ask Sergei to test for this mutation, and unfortunately, the test was positive. 
His results indicated that Bryn had about 10 more years to live a full and healthy life before the disease would potentially begin to progress. Bryn bore the news bravely and instead of panicking or getting depressed, began drinking gallons of black coffee, which is believed to fight the disease. This drink did not suit Sergei's taste at all, so he later switched to green tea. According to recent studies, such a diet can reduce the likelihood of the disease by 50%. After receiving the unhappy news, Bryn switched his focus and set sights on bringing some important breakthrough discovery or technology to the world. As a result, Google X was founded in January 2010 with innovative projects including neural networks, unmanned cars, and augmented reality glasses. Bryn had a very special relationship with this interesting device. He was absolutely thrilled with the idea of creating a unique gadget which would be neither a pair of glasses nor a smartphone, but would combine the functions of a smartphone and an internet access point, supplementing perception with visual and audio effects. In the fall of 2012, models walked down the runway at a fashion show in New York wearing Google Glasses, which was simultaneously streamed online. Sergey hasn't parted with his glasses since. At the event, in addition to Sergey, Anne, and Diane, a bright brunette who was destined to involve the spouses in a rather painful love polygon was also caught by the camera lens. Amanda Rosenberg, a beauty with Chinese origins and a marketing specialist at Google Glass who is 13 years younger than the company's founder, was actively involved in promoting the gadget. At the time, she was dating one of the company's executives, the talented Brazilian Hugo Barra, an executive in the Android division. Rosenberg at one point became very close to Bryn's wife. Very soon, however, Anne discovered the amorous correspondence between her friend and her husband, and a few months later, Sergei moved out of his lawful spouse's house next door. Rosenberg, on the other hand, continued dating Bryn as if nothing had happened while staying with her boyfriend Hugo. Rumors claimed that both Larry Page and the Google CEO were aware of the situation. Meanwhile, an unsuspecting Hugo Barra was planning to move with Amanda to China because he received a very lucrative offer from Xiaomi. However, Amanda soon turned him down. Since then, Bryn and his wife Anne have been thinking about how best to present the news of their separation to the public. It had to be done as delicately as possible, and it was not even about the division of property and custody over children. The couple had a prenup agreement where all of these points were stipulated. It was more about the business component. The two people had too much in common economically and ethically, and their divorce could have been a reputational risk. Finally, on August 28, 2012, the media reported that Wojcicki and Bryn were no longer together. Almost immediately, as Google executives feared, the ugly truth surfaced that Bryn had cheated on his spouse with his employee. Larry Page was almost more bothered than anyone else, and it was a near-physical ordeal for him to discuss the company's name alongside the sordid gossip. It got to the point where the friends simply stopped talking for a while. Since Rosenberg remained in her former position after the scandal, this provoked a negative reaction from many employees, especially from female employees who feared becoming victims of harassment. That same day, August 28, Bara announced that he was moving to Xiaomi, so it looked as if Hugo had been forced to leave Google. Meanwhile, Anne and her friends flew to Fiji to recuperate, do yoga, and most importantly, be away from this whole nightmare. Interestingly enough, even after such an ugly story, Bryn and Wojcicki have managed to maintain a warm relationship. They often spend time together with the children and visit Larry and his partner Marissa. This fact terribly angered Amanda, and the couple entered into a serious rift with scandals and tantrums. It soon became clear that a harmonious union between Sergey and Amanda had not developed, and they parted. Anne and Sergey's divorce did not officially take place until 2015. In the same year, Google announced a major restructuring, according to which it joined the Alphabet Holding Company. Larry Page as CEO and Sergey Brin as president remained in charge of the corporation. In 2017, a new romantic interest entered Sergey Brin's life. This time, his girlfriend was a Stanford graduate, lawyer, and the owner of a patent office, Nicole Shanahan. In 2018, the couple had a daughter whose name is unknown to the general public, and in 2019, Sergey and Nicole legalized their relationship. The ceremony was again held in the Bahamas. Everything was quite simple and as relaxed as possible. For example, the guests of the celebration were dressed in bathing suits. In June of that year, it became known that Sergey filed for divorce because of his wife's fleeting affair with Elon Musk. On December 3, 2019, Alphabet Corporation announced that Bryn and Page were stepping down as president and CEO, respectively. Both will continue to serve as the company's board of directors. According to the executives, there is nothing wrong with this event. It was just time for new projects. This is true because Bryn just has no time to be idle, as he is always ready to test himself in the most unexpected roles. As a matter of fact, in 2013, 20th Century Fox made a film, The Internship, which focused on the Google company. The main roles were played by Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn, 
while Sergey Brin played himself and appeared in the frame twice. The film received mixed reviews from critics and a tepid reception from the public, but that did not stop it from earning nearly $100 million at the worldwide box office. As any self-respecting star should, Sergei owns a whole list of expensive acquisitions. First and foremost, there is the $25 million Boeing 767-200, which he co-owns with his friend Larry Page. The aircraft is unique not only because of the huge Google inscription on its fuselage, but also because of its privileged location at the Moffett Federal Airfield owned by NASA. Not only do Brennan and Page have the right to land there, but they also have the right to take off individually, meaning that when they take to the skies, no other aircraft is allowed to do so. The thing is that back in 2014, a Google-controlled venture company signed a contract to lease 1,000 acres of the airbase for 60 years at a cost of over $1 billion. Among other things, Bryn is passionate about airships and sees them as a very big prospect. That is why experimental workshops have been set up in hangars on the Moffett property. The billionaire plans to use his developments in the fields of aeronautics for humanitarian purposes. Airships are suitable for transporting goods, people, contribute to aid in hard-to-reach areas where no modern aircraft can land, and besides, they are environmentally friendly. In addition, back in 2014, an $84 million project was launched to build an entire terminal at San Jose Airport to serve the needs of Google Corporation employees by providing them with flights and private jets owned by the company. There has also been speculation that Bryn is building a huge, comfortable airship blimp exclusively for his family, but rumors are still just that. While a flying ship is only in the plans, Bryn has an $80 million Dragonfly luxury yacht as an asset. The graceful Dragonfly is 240 feet long, equipped with the latest technology from an open-air cinema to a dance floor and is considered one of the fastest yachts on the planet. Sergey knows a lot not only about fast yachts, but also fast cars. His car fleet includes the famous Tesla Model S, which was the subject of a friendly April Fool's prank in 2013. Bryn's colleagues turned the head of the company's car into a pink lady's Batmobile. After everyone had a good laugh, the electric car was restored to its original appearance. How Bryn himself reacted to the prank is not known, but he is a great humorist. He even once held a job interview dressed as a cow. And finally, the love of Google's co-owners for eco-friendly transport resulted in the fact that since 2018, they have owned matching Toyota Prius cars, the cost of which is estimated at $30,000. As for real estate here, too, Sergey has everything very practical and thorough, and not without an investment perspective. For example, experts consider a two-level penthouse in Manhattan with a total area of 3,500 square feet a very good investment, as the price will only grow with time. Bought in 2008 for $8.5 million, the duplex has already doubled in value. Another unique location for the Bryn family is a villa in Los Altos Hills, California, which is considered one of the most popular sites among the rich and celebrities. The neighborhood is lined with apricot orchards and sequoias, and home prices can go as high as $60 million, guaranteeing an exceptionally reputable neighborhood. Bryn himself owns land there, on which he has built a quality house worth almost $16 million. In 2015, several American media outlets reported that Sergey was looking for a new home for himself. The 9,000-square-foot mansion is located in Bergen County, New Jersey. The house is amazing in scope. It has 12 bedrooms, 19 bathrooms, a swimming pool, bars, wine cellars, and even a basketball court. The owners were asking for $50 million for the house, and it's not known if the deal went through. Considering how much Sergey Brin earns, he could buy absolutely any house. His personal fortune is now estimated by Forbes magazine at $76 billion. Brin keeps a significant part of his assets in his investment portfolio, and it is very diverse and full of bold ideas. There's the development of space tourism, in which he invested $4.5 million, and genetics, in which his former wife is engaged. Bryn is also concerned about the meat industry, which in his opinion is substantially damaging to the environment. That is why he financially supports the development of test tube meat. In addition, Sergey has understandably invested over $100 million in research on Parkinson's disease, which he is predisposed to. Google has been actively engaged in charity since 2004. Specifically, from the moment of free capitalization, 1% of annual income goes to various foundations. Since then, the company has donated over $500 million for good causes. Bryn personally allocated half of a million dollars to support the Wikipedia project because he stands up for the freedom to obtain unbiased information on the internet. All of this is very reminiscent of the famous theory about business karma, according to which success comes only to those who help others with an open heart. Indeed, Google's unheard of success has been the simplicity of the business products the company develops and presents, keeping people in mind. According to Sergey Brin's logic, technology should not complicate life, allowing the consumers to choose their perfect opinion from the chaotic variety of products on the market. That is why work on these projects never stops, and the best minds of our time are working to make our lives a little bit better right now.
Sergey Brin is a techno billionaire, a genius, a philanthropist, and simply an incredible man who can be safely called the ambassador of the future. His style is jeans, sneakers, and the absence of convention and pathos, as well as a healthy lifestyle and a great passion for it. It is people like him who can see the high-tech, bright, and peaceful future of the planet. What else do you think he could invent? If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.